Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you for watching. I'm here with the one and only Greg Dickerson. How you doing, sir? Doing great, Michael. How about you? I'm doing wonderful, man. Thank you again for being uh, mobile, looking at deals, and still taking this hour to be with us. I really do appreciate it. Hey, Mondays with Michael, I drop what I'm doing, and <laughs> here we are. Oh, I appreciate that. Hey, I want to share a saying that I have because I think it feels right, but you, but you know, you're such, you're so accomplished. Sometimes you look at a situation differently, right? The idea of rich dad, poor dad being the greatest example, right? I read it. I see one thing you read it, see the other. It's just, I just love how you see the world um, because it's different than mine, not better or worse, just different. And I appreciate the feedback. So here's a saying, uh, and I want to know how, kind of how it hits you. And that is financial freedom is hard, but a better financial future is easy. How's that feel? I think they're both easy. Ah, I knew it. I knew you were going to say it. I knew it. <laughs> yes. You know what's hard? Uh, the only thing that's hard is deciding what it is you want. Uh, that's what's hard. Getting it is easy. So when you say financial freedom is hard, you know, the decision that somebody has to make to become financially free is what's difficult because that requires sacrifice. Yes. Okay. You have to educate yourself. You have to take action on that education. You have to give up, you know, um, you know, immediate gratification for delayed gratification. You have to do, you know, what's difficult today so that you can do what's, you know, easier down the road. Yeah. And, um, you know, do what you have to today so you can do what you want to tomorrow, as Dave Ramsey likes to put it. Yeah. So it's not hard, especially right now in this day and age in this world, it is so easy to make extra money. If you have a full-time job mm -hmm. and you want to create financial freedom, freedom to make an extra 20, 50, or a hundred grand a year, in addition to your current job that you can invest in other things that ultimately grow. There's nothing hard about it. What's hard is, you know what? I don't want to watch this TV show tonight or, you know, uh, you know that I'd rather sit down and watch TV. I'd rather go out and party. I'd rather, you know, go, go hang out with my buddies. I'd rather not read a book. I'd rather not watch, you know, what, what I need to do. I'd rather not, you know, go attend that seminar. I'd rather not do what I need to do to put myself in that position. And I'll, and I'll put it to you this way. A lot of people have told me over the years, I want to be rich. I, I want to be a millionaire. Yeah. And I'm like, do you really? Yeah. And like, yeah. I'm like, okay, are you willing to do whatever it takes morally, legally, and ethically to make that happen? In other words, if I tell you, you could sleep eight hours a night and the rest of the time you're working other than when you have to eat and take a shower. Uh, are you willing to do that? Yeah. Most people aren't. Yeah. You know, I did that. You know, I worked from, you know, I'd get up at, I'm telling you my life for 15 bucks an hour when I was learning. I would get up at 5 a.m. so I could be on the job site by 7 so I could work all day till 5.30 so my commute was two hours so I could get home just in time to eat, take a shower, or take, well, I'd take a shower first because I was dirty working in the field, take a shower, eat, get back in bed by 9 o'clock so I could get up at 5 and do it all over again. Yeah. And I did that six days a week. Sundays I did rest a little bit or I was doing a side job on a Sunday. Yeah. I mean, that's what I did the most of my younger life because I wasn't smart enough at that point to use my mind. Yeah. I had to use my hands, right? you know, but, um, I took advantage of every opportunity to do an extra job. If somebody needed something done after work, I'd come home, I'd go do something if I, you know, so, you know, are you willing to do whatever you need to do to educate yourself? Now you can do it here with your mind. You don't have yeah. to use your hands. You can manage social media. You can be a, you know, digital advertising agency. You can be a website designer. You can be a graphic designer. You can be, um, you can teach a skill if you have a skill, you know, all those types of things where you can make an extra 20, 50, 100 grand a year and beyond with some of those business models that don't require you to be anywhere but behind a computer with the, the knowledge and the abilities to be able to, to do that. So, you know, to me, it's easy. It's a yeah. matter of what are you willing to do? I love all of that because we agree 100% with everything you've just said with one subtle twist. The other thing that what I'm sure you you meant to say it, but it just wasn't, I didn't hear it was you need to be able to do that for a length of time, right? Just because you decide you move forward, you start doing it. You, you work six days a week, 15 hours a day for a decade, right? I mean, it, it took time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't until, so I graduated high school in 1985, went in the Navy, spent four years there and that's 12 hours on 12 hours off. So that was no, you know, that was no, there was no picnic or, neither. You know, yeah. <laughs> no, picnic and uh, when I got out I worked 
And, you know, I bounced around a little bit when I was younger, you know, did a little bit of partying, hanging out, you know, wasted a lot of time because I, I, at that point didn't have the right mindset or understanding, but I was learning skills that I could later use. But then after I got married, I was 23 years old. That was in 1990. Hmm. And from that point on, that's when I made up my mind, I'm going to get serious about my life. And I started educating myself. And that from that point on, from 90 until 97, you know, when I started my full-time company, and then it wasn't until probably 2000. So from 1990 to 2000, and then previously, so yeah, about 15 years it took me of that kind of work to get to where I could do whatever I wanted to do, whenever I wanted to do it. Yeah. And that's what really I'm trying to get at with this saying, right? Because a lot, and that's why I actually see what I try to teach people is a better financial future is really three steps. First, it starts at day zero. It's that decision you talked about. What are you willing to do? Are you willing to live below your means? Are you willing to sacrifice hours, sacrifice sleep, cut out negative people, do all of those things, right? That's kind of a decision. Then as you move forward, the better financial future is first, right? That's like the first step on the chain, which is relatively easy as we both, as you've said, right? Because it could come to you, right? You live below your means, you save a little money, you get a side hustle, it's money starts coming in. And then for me, it's the time angle, right? Uh, it takes longer than people want, right? They, ever, they want everything now. It's the microwave economy. And as you just said, you, you were doing that for 15 years. My portfolio was built over the same time frame, 15 years. I think if I had to do it again, I could do it in seven or eight. Uh, but the whole idea is, are you willing to be uncomfortable for seven to 15 years so that you can have 50 years of freedom? And that's what I now, mean by yeah, I'll qualify that. It sure. wasn't, you know, 12, 16, 18 hours a day for that entire period. But what it was, Fair. was sometimes maybe six months to a year I had that time. Like I was opening a business, opening a restaurant, you know, doing a project out of town. So here's my mentality. This is how I operate. So I'm out of town working on a job. And my choices are I can stay another night, pay for a hotel, come back tomorrow and finish up in four hours, or I just stay till midnight tonight, finish this job and I can go home and I don't have to pay for another hotel. Yeah. So I have an extra hundred bucks I can invest. Yeah. Right. I would stay till midnight, get the job done or even traffic. Like I'd be local where it was a two hour commute because of commute traffic. I'd be like, you know what? I'm just going to stay and work till eight o'clock because I'm just going to be sitting in traffic for two hours and I get home in 30 minutes Yeah. You know, or 45 minutes. So those types of decisions where the average you know, individual that's not really, you know, motivated will say, you know, I'm just going to do the minimum yeah. to get by. So I was always the first one in, the last one to leave. I wasn't the smartest guy in the room, but you were not going to outwork me. I yeah. will outwork you every day, all day. You will not outwork me. You're not going to do it. I so that, that was my mentality. And, you know, and it was spurts. And even now, if I'm launching a venture or doing a business, man, I'm on it. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Now I've got balance. I didn't miss an event. My kids had, I coached all their sports. I volunteered at the church. Nice. I did all of that in addition to the work, but I wasn't out once I was married and you know, responsible, obviously <laughs> I was doing those things instead of sitting in front of the TV, you know, going to the bar, you know, hanging out, you know, doing whatever fishing or whatever it was instead of taking care of business. Yeah. So my mindset was I took care of business first so that I could be there for my kids and for the community events that I was involved in and all that kind of stuff instead of sitting in front of the TV and all that. And if I did have any extra time at all, it was spent pouring into my mind right. and learning new skills, educating myself, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of how it evolved. And as I got you know older, I was able to, you know, take a little bit of time here and there, but that's the other thing is that I take my time in chunks. It's not like Friday, five o'clock I'm done. And I don't even think about work till the weekend. I do deals all the time. Yeah. You know, I'm up, I'm always on now. My general business, business hours are eight to six Monday through Friday, Eastern time. But if a deal comes up, you know, and it's whatever, it's whatever. I'm yeah. on, I'm on, I'm responding, you know, um, you know, if it's a deal or it's an opportunity and it doesn't get in the way of other things, I do have balance and yeah. I've always been there, but I take care of business first. I do what it takes first. Um, and then I do what I want to do later. And, uh, and I build teams around me. So I don't have to do everything because I have people that take care of all the details. Yeah. So, you know, I can delegate and all that, and I don't have to worry about all the little details. So those are the things that you learn how to do as you grow and as you have the resources to do that. And the first thing was chores around the house. So for me, first thing I did was, you know, I got rid of the, you know, landscaping, you know, yard maintenance and all that. I mean, that was, that freed me up, you know, three or four hours a week, certain times of years, cleaning my cars. I hire a detailer, I go to the car wash and I'll do that. You know, um, I get a housekeeper every so often, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I had somebody come almost every day for a while there when our kids were growing <laughs> and we're living on the beach, it was messy, but 
So I hired out those things yeah. to give me the extra time. So I didn't spend time cleaning the house and the cars and the garage and all that stuff. <laughs> so it's, it's looking at it from that standpoint in terms of what's the highest and best use of your time. My time's better spent earning than it is cutting my grass. Now, Absolutely. For some people, they like to do that. That's their exercise. That's their therapy and all that. And that's great. But you got to think about your life in terms of there's only so much time. There's mm -hmm. only so many hours in a day. And at the end of the day, the hardest thing to do is make up your mind what it is you want to do. You want to lose weight? Everybody wants to lose weight. Yeah. Well, do you really? Because if you did, you would change the way you eat and you would exercise because that's all you got to do. Yeah. You know, you know, I really want to quit smoking. Do you? Well, then quit. Yeah. You know, I mean, so you have to make up your mind and that, and I've been there. I mean, I used to weigh 80 pounds more than I do now. I used to be a lifelong smoker. Wow. Four, um, I decided to quit smoking and lose weight. I made up my mind and I did both at the same time. Wow. I quit smoking and lost weight at the same time. So it's, it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's all mindset. Oh, I, I couldn't agree with that more. And that's actually why that's really where my saying came from, right? Fin get it, having a better financial, um, Better financial future is easy because it's the decision. You could see some of those returns. But where I think it is hard for most people is that consistency. Where I see most people break down is they get into it six months or nine months. And then life happens. And they're and they and they it's like losing weight, right? A lot of people go on those yo-yo diets, right? They lose 20 pounds and they gain 25 back. Then they lose 20 and they gain 25 back. It's it's that consistency that I don't see enough. Uh, and that's why I, I just well, want people to realize it's hard. And habits and hobbies. So everybody I knew had a boat, ah. but I didn't. I was the only builder I knew that didn't have a boat. Why did I not have a boat? Number one, the time commitment. That's a lifestyle. Yeah. You know, it takes a lot of time to own a boat and deal with it and do that and, and all that. Why do that when I can go rent one? I can go out with somebody and I just I use it and I drop it off. Yeah. No cost, no time, none of that. Golf. You know, you've heard the saying about golf, right? That if you can't break 90, you have no business on the golf course. If you do break 90, you got no business. Yeah, <laughs> yes. If you can shoot, if you're a scratch golfer, you know, if you're not a scratch golfer, you got no business on the golf course. But if you are a scratch golfer, you got no business. So I love that. You know, I've never heard that. People would rather go out and play golf every yeah. minute of every day that they have extra to, to lower their handicap or to be a better golfer. But they don't, and then they'll go home and complain, well, I don't have any money. And I'm not, you know, criticizing. Yeah. I'm just saying that's the mindset we're talking yeah. about when I say delayed gratification. Yeah, it's fun to play golf. I enjoy those things. I never got really good at it because it takes too much time. Yeah. I'd rather go do something that's going to move me forward mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, than to go, you know, shoot a 72. Yeah. You know what I mean, I could care less. Yeah, I have yeah. fun shooting a 90. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I love this. This is, I was so glad we had this conversation because I knew you would disagree. And I love that because you, you see the world so clearly uh, that I just, I enjoy all of these conversations. Uh, that, that was awesome. So um, I guess I do have a question for you. I wasn't going to go here, but I just thought, I thought, I'd, what do you do today to relax, decompress, have fun? What, what, what is, what does the Dickerson family do for fun? So I take time in chunks. I like to travel. Okay. you know, around the world. Um, I haven't been to Europe much in my life. So, you know, we're starting to explore that kind of stuff. Um, I enjoy exercise. You know, I hit the gym every morning I'm in the gym, you oh, know, nice. so I'm up every single day at the same time. The first thing I do after coffee and waking up, spending time with my wife is I go to the gym and I do a little road work, you know, Okay. <clears throat> 20 minutes a day. That's all it takes. And, um, you know, so it's a mixture between cardio and gym <clears throat> keeps me lean, keeps me in shape. And, um, I enjoy playing golf with my friends every once in a while, but not every day. Yeah. You know, I mean, maybe once a month, you know, I'll get out and do that. But what I enjoy, what I've always enjoyed, that's always filled me is I don't work. I've never worked Yeah. <clears throat> since 1997. When I stepped out on my own, I have not worked a day in my life. I love building people. I love building things. I love doing the consulting I do. I'm working with people all over the world. Yes. Um, you know, I love reading and feeding myself with stuff. I love to go to the movies. My wife and I would go to the movies almost every weekend, um, especially during the pandemic, because we've been the only ones in there. You know? So, <laughs> Did you see uh, the new the Fast theater. and Furious movie this weekend? No, no. I haven't. I haven't okay. been there, but right. I like to eat out and enjoy okay. different restaurants, you know, so, so I do little things here and there and, you know, stuff like that. So I'm not all work and all yeah. that. You know, I'm not a workaholic. I just enjoy what I do. I love the relationships, what you and I do. I love helping people. Yeah. I get more of a kick out of helping people and watching people grow and achieve their goals yeah. more than I do any deal I've ever done. I you totally know? I mean, agree to me, with that. 
I totally agree. Oh, it's so much fun. And I've done it in all of my businesses, all of my companies, all of my deals. And now to be able to work with, you know, I've got somebody in Australia flipping houses in the United States. I'm coaching him. I've got, you know, people in, um, you know, India. I've got people in Europe. I've got people in um, Asia. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable doing all kinds of different things, you know, That's from awesome. the companies and investing and deals. And, and I've got them all over the country, everything from doctors and lawyers and, you know, uh, contractors and investors and professionals, and then people just getting started. I mean, it's yeah. just, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. You're doing some amazing things in your coaching programs. How can people find out more about them? So it's Greg Dickerson.com. Uh, my website has all the information, my YouTube channel, podcast and all that. So, you know, I mean, I just, I just love what I do, man. It's just so yeah. much fun. It's so interesting to, and, and to be able to do the things that I can do and that the abilities that I've had that I've gained over the years from being involved in so many different businesses. So equity capital, uh -huh. you know, buying companies, growing them, you know, selling them, building them up, you know, real estate, developing, you know, buying and renovating, building ground up. I mean, it's just so interesting to, to do all these different things, to be able to do these kinds of deals and meet all these different people and, you know, learn from people all around the world doing the things they're doing. It's just, I can't get enough, you know, it's, just, uh -huh. it's amazing. That is awesome. Well, you clearly are very good at what you do and you, you and the ability to give back is, is second to none. You have, I'm sure, over 100 hours of material on this channel. So I appreciate you every week. Thanks for stopping by after looking at a deal. Yeah, man. I enjoyed talking with you. It's a lot of fun. Thanks, buddy.